Like and subscribe right now, or this spider will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Fear of the unknown paralyzes many people, and we don't blame them. And if you are traveling in the desert in the middle of the night, watch out, as the unknown things can pop out of nowhere at any moment. Unbelievable! Nothing could have prepared these young men for what they witnessed in the desert as they observed a stranger crouching by the side of the road. Assuming that something was wrong and not wanting to take any chances, they pulled over to see if the person needed help. Obviously, the guy does whatever he feels is appropriate, which is to scream for his life as the thing gathers up speed and starts limping towards them making a horrible, extremely unnerving grunt. Many people believe the monster is a witch or an angry ghost, but as a Weird Things expert, I say it doesn't matter what it is, as long as it isn't coming for me. A Croco Pile in the Desert You'd think I've gone mad if I told you a giant prehistoric crocodile had been discovered in the Tunisian desert. Sure, but that has nothing to do with the crocky discovered in the desert, man. Apart from the jokes, I know what you're looking for. It's possible that it's not a large crocodile, but it is. And we're not talking about Bigfoot here. P.S. I believe in you too, footy. The fossilized remains of a sea-dwelling crocodile unearthed were partial and imperfect, but they were enough to identify the animal as the largest known member of a distinct lineage of crocodiles. The tallest guy I know. My buddy, the Marine Man. Is this Australia's largest geoglyph? And the biggest mystery is who constructed it, and how could anyone create such a massive figure and keep it hidden for so long? These are all wonderful questions, and we aren't the only ones who want answers. The Marine Man, who looks to portray an indigenous man hunting with a boomerang, was sculpted in 1998 and is one of the world's largest geoglyphs, standing 1.7 miles tall and 17 miles wide. Party Lair in the Desert The Middle East is famous for its fairy tale Arabian Nights, but have you ever wondered where Aladdin's extravagance came from? Allow us the honor of presenting you the earliest totally lit party spot that could totally beat the heat. Summers in the scorching deserts of the Middle East may be unbearably hot, so thousands of years ago, ancient Persians devised a cooling solution, the Yakal. In the summer, Yakal is the place to be. Many of the Yakal were created hundreds of years ago in Persia and are still standing today, demonstrating exceptional craftsmanship. Above all, the Yakal is a brilliant bit of innovation to assure life in a part of the world known for its sweltering heat. Should be or not to be? Yes, if you're a Shakespeare geek, you'll find that term difficult to bear. But just once, hear us out. If you're ever in the West Texas desert and want to buy designer footwear or a handbag, go to the Prada store off of Route 90, as you'll find there absolutely nothing. Because it's not a genuine Prada store, but rather an art installation that appears completely out of place among the sand and tumbleweeds. Since there's no working door, you can't enter the single room exhibit, but you can look through the window at genuine Prada handbags and shoes. The sheer oddity of a luxury retail store appearing in the middle of the desert makes Prada Marfa a significant tourist destination. Choo Choo in the middle of nowhere. The Cementerio de Trenes, or the Great Train Graveyard, is a collection of rusting locomotives and rotting train cars on the outskirts of an abandoned transportation hub near the mesmerizing salt flats of Uyuni in Bolivia. This site is the product of a 19th century plan to expand the Uyuni region's train network. The project never came to fruition. <laughs> Bummer. I would have loved to see one. Just for work's sake, it's not like I'm some weird guy who still keeps his childhood train sets. <laughs> no, not at all. But as the local mining industry dried up, developers ran into negotiations, conflicts with other countries, and increasingly complicated technical problems. And the plans came to a halt, leaving more than a hundred trains parked in the middle of the desert. Most of the vehicles were imported from Britain during the early 20th century, 
and they're heavily rusted from the region's salty winds, and they've also been vandalized. Pity. It's a plane to see. And from trains, we bring you planes. <laughs> We're as creative as Disney. If they can pull it off, so can we. Workers for a Polish oil company on an expedition in the Sahara Desert in 2012 uncovered an unmanned British Royal Air Force fighter plane. This would be strange enough, but curiosity was sparked when the plane was discovered to have crashed there nearly 70 years ago during World War II. Because of its exceptional condition, the plane was quickly identified as a Kitty Hawk P-40. The fighter plane, which had six machine guns attached to its wings, was supposed to terrorize two Axis armies, but it only hit the sand. A parachute was discovered on the scene, seemingly fashioned into a temporary shelter, indicating that the pilot survived the crash. Long time, no see. Yes, by no sea, we mean just oasis. And please don't yell maybe, because we're not talking about the band. But a magnificent oasis located in the sand dunes. During the scorching summer of 2014, the Tunisian desert Lac de Gafsa became an instant tourist draw. The lake's uniqueness stemmed from the fact that it's formed seemingly out of nowhere in an otherwise parched desert location. The water, which is estimated to be between 32 and 59 feet deep, began as a beautiful blue, but gradually became green as algae began to infest the lake. The presence of algae in the lake suggested that it had become stagnant, making it a breeding ground for diseases including dengue fever and malaria. UFO in the Dunes I'd be guilty if I didn't raise the possibility that any desert wanderer would be perplexed until they heard the explanation. A flying saucer crashed into the Utah desert in 2004. Furthermore, NASA provided evidence in the form of photographs. Unfortunately, this was nothing to do with small green dudes in this case. Instead, it was a Genesis sample return capsule, a NASA spacecraft charged with collecting solar wind particles. The parachutes that were supposed to slow the craft's descent never opened when it returned from its three-year journey. NASA had to send in helicopters to recover the identified falling object, which was moving at about 25,000 miles per hour. Fortunately, most of the research was saved. Despite the fact it was not a mystery to those in the know, the sight of it must have sent any knowledgeable passerby out of their orbit. I spy with my eye, the Eye of Sahara. Okay, not with my eye exactly, but with Google's eye. Ta-da! From the ground, the Sahara's eye, also known as the Recot structure, appears to just be another stretch of sand. The anomaly hidden deep within the Sahara Desert is a wonder from the sky, with gigantic eyes peering up from the sand. Yet, it's only visible to Google Earth users and astronauts. Over the years, various theories for the eye have been proposed, ranging from the commonplace to the supernatural. Initially, geologists thought the eye was a massive asteroid impact crater, but examinations discovered no indication of extraterrestrial substances. This structure, according to a recent idea published in the Journal of African Earth Sciences, is a badly eroded geologic dome formed more than 100 million years ago. And now, let us move on to our subscriber pick of the day. This image was sent to us by one of our subscribers. Similarly, if you ever wish to know more about an image you come across, just send it on over to us. Who knows, we might even feature it in one of our videos. The subscriber's pick. Let's be honest, this photo is weird, but the story behind it is even stranger. The corpse was discovered in Zaragoza Valley, Mexico, a vast and largely uninhabited expansive desert. Apparently, the guy was hiking through the desert and just kind of found it, but his story is even stranger. He claims that the corpse started moving out of nowhere, and he had to take a picture because he wasn't sure if it was real or some kind of animal. Clown Hotel. The Clown Motel is a roadside attraction near Tenopo, Nevada that makes finding quality lodging in the desert at a fair price a little easier. Until now, finding a nice hotel in the desert at a fair price has been difficult. The Clown Motel is a roadside attraction in Tonopa, Nevada, and it's unlike any other hotel or motel in the world. If you're afraid of clowns, you should go stay in a city hotel. 
The Clown Motel is easily recognized as it sits on the edge of the desert, decked with thousands of clowns and conveniently positioned near the abandoned Wild West Graveyard. If you're into that, the Clown Motel is the last chance for truckers and bikers to find a place to rest before a stretch of unbroken Nevada desert. And man, is it unsettling. When a traveler walks in, they see a life-sized clown sitting in a chair, cradling smaller clowns in its freaky hands. But it gets worse. The walls are lined with stuffed animals, porcelain statues, and wall hangings that stare down at you from every conceivable angle. Thank you very much for watching the video. Do like and share it with your friends. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to not miss any of the upcoming amazing videos. Thank you once again.